Hi, this is Phil Carlton. Before I get started, I wanted to remind you, you can find me over on Facebook under Premiere Plus Phil, and you can also follow me on YouTube to see when I post more videos. I released an online course last week digitizing a few Christmas ornaments, and in that video I mentioned you could use this feature to create mitered corners, and I got a question asking if I could demonstrate that, so I thought I would do that today. So I'm going to start by working in Premiere Plus 2 Create, and I'm going to go to the Precise Create tab. So remember Create is our digitizing module, but I'm going to start by just digitizing a satin line and looking at a little of how the miters work. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to click the top half of the Pattern button because I don't want to create a fill with this. I'm going to start with just a satin line, so I have satin line active. And the first thing I always do when I'm digitizing is go all the way to the far right and under Options, click Fill Area and Line. That lets me pull up the properties for the object I'm going to create. I'm going to start by just creating a pretty wide satin stitch here. I'm going to go to a 6 millimeter, and I'm going to do that just so it's easier to see what's happening with my tapers. Then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Create Area or Line, and I'm going to click two points to just set a straight line. I'll click one here and one down just a little bit, then right click to complete the line. Notice my tool is still active. I don't want to create any more lines, so I'm going to right-click a second time to deselect the tool. Now when I right-click again, it's going to bring up the Fill Area and Line Properties box, and now we can look at the different tapering options. We can set the tapering for both the start and end points of any line. I want to start by just showing the three different options, and then we'll use them to create a mitered corner. So with my start point right now, is at flat. That means there is no taper at the top of my line. If I change this to the left taper, when I click Apply, it's starting at the upper left and giving me a diagonal taper down. The right taper is going to give me exactly the opposite effect. And my third option is this center one here, which is going to taper it to a point. Now all of these have been at 45 degrees, but we can adjust the angle from 30 to 89. So if I take it down to a lower number, say a 30, when I click Apply, it gives me a much sharper taper. If I'm going with the point, it's going to give me a much sharper point. If I take it all the way up to say 80, when I click Apply, I have a much less tapered point. Same thing here with the angled one. So I can set these for both the start and the end, and they can be different. So I could say start the beginning at a degree of 30, and maybe have the end at a left taper at 45. And when I click Apply, I'm going to get those tapers. Now what I want to look at now is a little bit of how we can use this to create a mitered box. So when we're working with mitered corners, we're going to be working with 45 degrees. And if we think about the way this line's probably going to be running, I'm going to cancel this for a moment. Let's say my first line is going to run this direction from left to right. I'm going to right click to go into my properties again, and I'm going to have this start at a right taper of 45 degrees. I'm going to have it end at a right taper of 45 degrees, and click OK. And now you can probably see how these will miter. So let's create the other three lines by going into the Options tab and go to Fill Area and Line. Now I'm going to set my tapers for the lines I'm going to create. So when I go into Fill Area and Line and make a setting, that's going to impact anything I digitize from that point until I change my options again. I'm going to click OK, click Create Area or Line. This pink Create cursor is telling me where my last line ended. So I'm going to click a point on that line, then a second point down at the bottom here. Right click to complete that line. Repeat this two more times with one point on the pink cursor, one point where I want to end the line. Then I'm going to right click, and if I just click this color stop, actually let me go into my life view, and we can see that's created a really nice mitered box. I want to show one other thing we can do with our tapered stitches, and that's working with motifs or decorative stitches. So I'm going to change my line type now to a motif line, and I'm going to come over to my fill area and line settings, and I'm going to select one of our decorative motifs. For the first example, I'm going to go to my group, FOF. For my category, I'm going to choose 2.3 crazy patch stitches. And I'm going to go down, and this is probably one of my favorite stitches to taper. It doesn't look really interesting, but it's really nice when we taper it. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm not going to set my start and end point yet. 
click OK, and I'm going to just click to set these two points to digitize this line. Right click, right click a second time to deselect that. And it's a pretty little stitch, but now when I right click and set my start and end taper, it creates a really pretty corner element. So let's create three more lines here. I'm going to go into fill area and line, turn on my right and left or my start and end taper, click OK click create area or line and just like you created the box I'm going to click to set two points right click click to set my two points right click and click to set my two points and right click and I love the way those corners taper I'm over in Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery now, and I want to show how we can create mitered boxes in this module. I'm going to go to the Border tab, and I'm going to first use the Motif Underline area to create a row of stitches. Then we'll create the mitered box. So I want to start by selecting the motif I want to work with. So I'm going to click Select Motif, and for this example, I'm going to go to my Viking Stitches, and I'm going to go down to Category J, Scallop Stitches, and I chose, I believe, stitch number eight. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my start taper and my end taper to 45 degrees and click OK because we know from our previous example that that 45 degree right is going to make it easy to miter this box. Then I'm going to go ahead and click the apply button. Now I want to show one thing that happens here when we work with tapering in the embroidery module. I'm going to go for a moment to the view tab and to the far left I'm going to turn off my grid then go back over to the border tab. So if we look here I'm going to click outside and click in the lower right hand corner my zoom to rectangle and click and drag. So something with the way the math works when we're working with tapered motifs in embroidery it adds a little space between the different motifs. So what I'm going to do is just tweak that number a little bit. It looks like there are about two or three millimeters between each of these motifs, and my width line right now is 146 millimeters. So instead of doing a set number of repeats, I'm going to change my length, and you kind of just have to experiment a little, but I'm going to delete this one, and it was 146 long, so I'm going to go to about 135 and set my length, so now when I click Apply, they're still a little too far apart, so now let me delete that and let me try it at maybe 125 and click Apply. Just a little less space between them would make me happy, so I'm going to take it down to 123. So you just experiment a little until you get a nice row of motifs. Now to create my mitered box, all I need to do is go to Encore. I'm going to Encore this to a circle with four repeats, and remember when we encore to a circle, the first one goes to 12 o'clock and then it spreads them out evenly, so four repeats in a circle is going to give me one on the top, right, bottom, and left, then all I need to do is grab my line of stitches and just drag them down until they meet. And when I click the green check mark to apply, I've created a really pretty mitered frame. This is the snowflake we digitized in the online course I wrote, but I wanted to show this as an example of the miters. So you can see that all the tips have mitered points, but I want to take it a little bit further because the miters can be decorative, but they can also be practical when we're digitizing. So if I go into my design player, and I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and roll my mouse wheel, and that will let me zoom into my design. I'm going to drag the slider to the left until most of the stitches are hidden, but if you look right here, when this one stitches, it starts with that tapered point at 45 degrees, but when I brought it down here, I had it taper in at 45 degrees, and that really reduced a lot of what would have been heavy bulk here if these satin lines had met in the center. Then I came in and finished the taper here at the bottom at about a 30 degree, and then as those begin to nest, we don't get a lot of buildup inside that space. So not only are they decorative, but they can be really practical when you're digitizing decorative lines. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've learned something new about your software. Have a great day.